Hello everyone, good afternoon and uh, welcome to another art conversation. The music we just hear made by Nella's today's artist brother-in-law based on one of her artwork, which she's going to explain later today. And um, I want to start our today conversation with a line from Nella Lash, a today artist statement in which she said, to be in that zone where a feeling of enlightenment makes you aware that the trust in your creative process is the key to the mystery of life. This is my art. Not easy to explain, but necessary to feel. Feeling, yes, feeling that we all are together. We are close, we are all one. That's the reason we're doing this. And that's the reason we are trying to connect. That's the reason we as women want to be here and stay closer. All right, Nella, thank you for those comforting and kind words in your statement and welcome to our today conversation. Thank you, Farin. That was um, actually brings me back at the time when I wrote those, uh, those um, words in the statement. And it's very true, right? Especially now, we, we are always in search of that inner um, feeling and um, all, the, all the questions that come upon us you know, about the mystery of life. And especially now with everything that is happening, that it's globally that um, we are aware and um, we are very blessed to be honest and uh, to be able to express it in different ways. Um, okay, Nella, please start with telling us about your background, who you are. Also, you mentioned that you come from a family of a lot of artists. And as you said in your own world in Italy, art is part of your DNA in a way. So please share us also a little bit about your artistic family, as well as this music and your brother-in-law and how he came to make this beautiful music out of your work. Definitely. So um, I come from Italy and um, it would be nice when you were a child if you really realized that, you know, what life is all about, but you don't. You're just surrounded by music. You're surrounded by grandmothers that they are doing everything from scratch and uh, no recipes, no internet, no, no patterns. Um, and you're surrounded by the history of the country and you don't realize it because you're young. But how important is it now that we are older to go back to that time and say, that's really what formed me. Um, I was in a country where it was an open museum. You really didn't need to go to museums or galleries, even though we didn't have museums and galleries where I came from. Uh, so I didn't really see my first museum until I was 10 years old. But um, going to a church, uh, just walking through the streets and uh, the church was the art gallery because of all the frescoes, all the statues. And so 
the formative years uh, were necessary for for me to become the person that I am now because now when I look back I said you know this is what my art is all about it's growing up in Italy and um, my grandmother's my uh, maternal grandmother was an incredible artist but when I say artist it's not because she was labeled as an artist. So she was a maker of everything and she worked with textiles. Um, she taught me a lot. And then of course my uh, paternal's grandmother, she was a botanical artist, but again, not because she was labeled an artist, but she took the time to work in her garden and then doing her drawings. And um, so I learned from that. My father would be playing the accordion outside in the country while he's listening to the birds and imitating the birds. And that's all art. And uh, what Picasso said is every child is an artist. It's very true. As long as you surround your children to a, a, a life full of art, music and um, it's, it's the life that we lead that will actually be an example for our children. And I think that's exactly what happened with me. Um, exactly. So it's, in a sense, as you said, it's part of your DNA, it's part of your blood, right? Music. And how about this music um, made by your uh, brother-in-law, which we hear a few seconds of it? Uh, yeah. So Peter, I invited him to come over and paint. And... Um, my husband's mother, my mother-in-law was also an artist, but you know, as a mother, sometimes you can't really teach your children. And uh, so um, he, uh, he, he expressed the desire of really letting loose and just paint. He's always been a musician ever since he was young. And um, so I invited him on a few Mondays and um, he was very loose in his work and uh, he has such an incredible time and he would just be mesmerized by the work that I was doing. So next, um, he sent me the, uh, the score that he wrote um, to, the, uh, to the fresco and um, it really made me cry because um, I knew that he moved him. And this is again, how thrilling it is for us artists when you see that our art is moving others in exactly. such an emotional way. Exactly. Actually, in a statement, in another part of your statement, you said, um, which is very touching, as you said, about moving and feeling, it said, you said, it doesn't matter what material and tools I use. What matter is the energy that each of my creation uh, emanate? It is magical connection that allows a viewer to feel and to be, to be moved by it. This is my art, right? The material and the artwork you do you create those to people be moved. You yeah. create it based on how you feel and therefore there are feeling alive inside your artwork. So since also we talk about material and um, your artwork, would you please tell us about your artwork? What type of artwork you are most identified? What type of material you use to create that feeling for the viewer to be wow and move? Yeah. Well, sometimes I feel that maybe I missed my call and I should have been a sculptor because I love textures. I love the layers. And it's amazing what happens when, when you just go one layer after the other, you add, you subtract, you add, you subtract, you really get lost. You don't remember how you do it either. But what, what I... Um, what I do is just layering with uh, paint, cold wax in, uh, on a base of you know, either a canvas or a panel or with pumice or plaster if it's a fresco. And, and then I just keep adding until something happens. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, when I say that it's magical, it truly is magical. So it's not something you plan or you have the concept. It's just you, when you pull the brush, it all come to you um, little by little. Yeah, I think I have, um, I have it on my website where Chagall said that if you paint, uh, painting from the heart 
almost everything comes out right. But the moment you paint from your head, almost nothing comes right. So, and it's, um, I've experienced that in, well, I experienced that all the time, in fact, because sometimes you can have a painting that um, came out really good and you would like to redo it. It just doesn't happen. So I, I'm very blessed that my galleries know me for the person that I am, that I'm very, uh, I can't be categorized in any particular way. So um, my work is the emotions of the day. It's, it's, you know, so that's how they develop. I um, also noticed at your website that you create a recent series during this COVID-19 art, and um, which is um, the concept, and you call it art from the soul. Would you please tell us about this series and how you start this series during uh, the pandemic? Uh, this particular one, I think that um, I'm looking at this uh, pandemic as an opportunity for us artists actually not just the artist, for everyone to analyze, uh, to identify things in your life, uh, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, one thing that has happened is I've had more time at home. I've always been in the studio most every day, every week, but at nighttime I would have meetings and uh, because I'm very busy that way, but um, all of a sudden, I noticed that I had more time to um, to admire my collections. I've always collected rocks, stones, stoneware, uh, all sort of potteries, and um, from from Europe, from this country, everywhere that I go, and I have over a hundred pieces. And um, so I started to um, look at them more. And then, before I knew, I started to work the negative space in this um, in this still lives just emerged. So the first one, the first one happened that way. And then the second one, and, and then it just kept going. I did 45 pieces in one month. Oh goodness. And all of them are most of them are vase, right? Or yeah. what yeah. choose vase as this still life and in particular during this pandemic. What that means to you. Yeah, so I didn't really know what it meant to me until a, um, someone sent me a link to, um, to explain it better. And um, exactly, threads of the divine, what is the vase? I was, oh my goodness, I said, this is what I'm doing. Actually, I realized that what I was doing, I was filling my vases with emotions and it made me feel better. And that's when I decided to change the titles to fill it with hope, fill it with peace, fill it with love, memories, and so forth. So I realized that there was a reason behind it. And, and again, I was just, um, it, it's, it's magical. It's just truly magical. When you follow that instinct, when you follow that intuition and, just that voice that you, that you have inside of you without caring because um, you need to have the dialogue with yourself and, and you just do it for yourself. Exactly. So it's more about your emotion again. I mean, it's very okay. overall the, sim the one of the major meaning of ways and symbolic meaning is about emotion. And just to add something to this, uh, there is a term in Pythagoras' study, um, which is his study, the shape, and according to him, circle is the parent of all shape. And they said, that's the essence of life and life is done. And there is a term in his chart uh, called Vesica Pixis. Uh, I, may, I may actually but write it down. I know I don't want to take much of your time, but I think this Vesica Pixis is um, something good to know. Vesica Pixis. Oops. Let me, sorry. Right. This is it. Vesica Pixis. I don't know if you can see. Um, so Pythagoras uh, term for Vesica Pixis, which is he, according to him, when you have one circle, if we imagine this is a circle, not perfect. And from the center of circle, start another circle. 
you create a in the center of this when these two connected there is a shape merge which is look like like a lozenge wow yeah. so he called this two circle passage of life wow where the life has started and then where the life has started it's also this shape the sick of pixels is symbol of female because mm. it look like women private area where the life also in women vagina started right Yeah, yeah. So kind of ways this and which is beside being emotion, ways as actually it's a female symbols. And that's in my idea, that's how the shape of ways came from, from this Vesica Pixis and study of mm-hmm. uh, Pythagoras. And um, which is, that's the sense of life. That's the passage of life in sense. Wow. Well. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I didn't no, want that's to. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I knew there was a meaning to it. Yeah. So, and then also one of the major meaning, it's emotion. You can, you can put your emotion inside the vase. So, which is perfectly yeah. makes sense. Yeah. What you did. You put I your... did it without thinking. So, yeah. and that's, you know, I, that was a whole month of March into April. So one month. You did um, these vases and it. How many you said there are 40 something? 45, yes. They're not all on the, in the website because I have some other ones. It just was overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Are you also doing marine landscape, I noticed. And in your note for your marine work, you state a quote from Picasso, which I like to uh, mention it. I feel validated with Picasso quote, Nella said. God is really only another artist. He made the elephant, giraffe, and cat. He has no real style, but keep trying new ideas. With that said in my own quote, Nella says, my focus in art is not the subject matter or a style, but simply the act of creation. Okay, so which you try a new style, this marine landscape. So would you please tell us about your marine landscape and what they mean to you and how you start them? It's interesting because um, I actually, in my 20s, I was a marine artist and uh, we lived in Spain at the time. And uh, my husband um, loved marine art and I was basically painting to please him. But I was also successful at the time with the marine art and uh, that's how we started. Uh, but I was doing a lot of uh, boats and I was uh, commissioned to do sailboats, portraiture and all that. And after a while, a while it became really tiring because uh, my husband is also an artist, but an engineer. So he would be the one saying, oh, this isn't right. So I said, okay, why don't you do it then? Because I'm not doing it anymore. When I do marine work, it's going to be my way. So I stopped doing marine work for a few years until 2012 when my mother passed away. And who knows what happened? Or maybe I know what happened. It is just all of a sudden, I just started to paint water, water and sky, water and sky and um, Prussian blue, dark blues. And um, actually those paintings They all sold. I was uh, juried into uh, the American Society of Marine uh, Artists. And I was also in the Mystic uh, Seaport Gallery in um, Mystic Seaport, Connecticut. So it, it brought me a lot of success, but also the galleries that I'm at, they carry my, my marine work. They know that I can only do it at my time. I have to feel like doing it. So, um, the boats, the, uh, they have no, uh, there isn't any details. It just, uh, it's feeling mostly the wind. I want you to feel the atmosphere. I, I don't use any reference material. It is just um, um, what comes to me. So it's all energy again. Mm-hmm. So it's no much different than the abstract work that I do, as long as I don't use the uh, a, any any reference material, I'm okay. And um, and I I did a, a demo a few years ago at the Mystic Seaport Gallery, 
And I told the other artists, and they were all established marine artists, and I said, you know, you um, not only you have to know the the sky and, and the water and all that, but you have to feel it. You have to know what the water feels like, what the wind feels like. What is, so that's, that's where I come from. Exactly. So I mean, so you feel when you look at this um, work of you in your website, I feel they are alive, you know? I feel I'm standing by the wall right now. I mean, look at this one, for example. You feel like, you know, you feel the ocean, you feel the wave, you feel the, like everything, you feel they are alive. And then um, since you mentioned about your mom, you know, I don't want to listen here, but like, you know, the symbolic meaning of ocean and sea, it's mother, it's motherhood. You know, maybe that's something moved you, you know, and then because that was your mom as sea and ocean and water, it's the mother of nature. Yes. You know, um, so that's, all we all feel something like you know motherhood with like you know with ocean with sea with water overall it's amazing it's totally amazing when you really think about it when you uh, follow those inner emotions it, it happens but you have to really be true to yourself i could easily say no no i'm doing abstract work i'm not doing that but i followed through with it because i wanted to do it I was doing it for myself. Exactly. That's about you and your emotion and how you move. And that those both probably is you <laughs> riding, you know, yes. through the ocean, through the wind. Through the emotions. Exactly. Through yeah. your emotion. Exactly. Yeah. I also notice you do fresco. You have a fresco series in your website. And what are they about? and how you make this fresco work? So at the beginning, I was actually doing the whole thing the proper way. So making my own plaster, making my own egg tempera. I don't do that anymore. So I, and I actually haven't done a fresco for a while. Uh, frescoes are very complicated because you have to work fast, you know, when the plaster dries and depends what kind of uh, what you're doing, if you're doing a fresco al fresco or, you know, when it's wet and, but um, I will probably say my frescoes identify me with Italy even more so because of the textures and because like I was saying, you go to a church, you go to a chapel and um, it's all frescoes on the walls, you know, so, um, I really had an incredible time, um, emotional uh, journey through the frescoes because of the layering. And, um, and there is an incredible shine to it because at the end I will add cold wax and uh, oil pigment. Um, but as I said, uh, because it is so involving, I just haven't done much of it. Yeah. How long it takes to make a fresco, like one wall, for example, some of, like, you know, one of these? Yeah, a smaller one, probably about a week or so. Mm -hmm. and then my larger pieces, uh, it's, it's hard to tell, you know, uh, it could go anywhere from uh, two weeks to a month. Oh, and then how long it takes to try? I never try fresco, I mean, so just... Um, you know, it's, it's again, when you have the uh, wet plaster, you start adding the, um, the egg tempera to it. And because I don't do any imagery, but in some of these frescoes, I actually have images, but they're all buried. So I know they are populated by people, but the layers will cover them up. I know that they're there though. Um, is there, um, like, you know, a connection between, like, you know, what you want to make and what, what material you want to use? Like, you know, what, or what emotion you are and what material you use? Yeah, so um, interesting that you asked me that because I really, the materials choose me. I don't even choose the materials. So I have everything open uh, in the studio, as you can see from the table behind me. And uh, many times I just go for what it's talking to me. And I know it sounds a little crazy, but it's the truth. 
Um, I don't like to plan anything. All right. And um, you also teach as well. I know you don't like to be called teacher. You mentioned that. I apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you teach, I know you have workshop and, you know, you're teaching. What can I say? You know, you're teaching. I know. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, I always say that I'd rather uh, be considered a mentor because that's what I do to the artists that have been with me for many years. We haven't been able to meet because of the pandemic, but every Tuesday they will be here in the studio. Um, so now we just uh, do a Zoom session. But for the uh, local art organization, Rockport Art Association, I did a, a, a workshop for them. And I had 17 artists. And the title of the workshop was Art from the Soul. And that was also very interesting because um, the artists knew that I'm not a teacher. I'm not telling you how to mix paints because you can go on YouTube, you can find all sort of tutorials. And a lot of these artists already know how to do that, but they don't know how to express themselves emotionally. And uh, so one thing that was very inspiring and also very moving was the fact that um, I wanted them to identify within themselves who they were, what their purpose was. And, um, and it was really eye-opening for a lot of them. And it was um, emotionally draining for me because it's almost like being a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> but um, emotionally draining, uh, draining in a good way because yeah. I, I said, oh my goodness, it works, it works. We have to believe in ourselves. And that's what I... That's so that's, uh, therefore, you are, besides being a mentor, you are a teacher as well. So I, I know you don't want to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. A friend yeah. of mine called me this morning. I said, I know you don't like to be called a teacher. <laughs> said, but you are teaching. You <laughs> are teaching. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And notice also you published a book, a children's book. I found it actually in the internet. Mm -hmm. um, what's this uh, book about? What, what is the age range and how you got the idea for this? So the Scotty was our, our first dog, Gracie. Now, actually, it was a second Scotty. And uh, so Gracie was the Scotty, and Belle was the pug that our daughter had. And uh, I always written little stories. And I, and, um, at the time, I had a little preschool also. So the influence for me is watching children also. Exactly. And I would just always come up with stories and I would have them come up with stories. But um, Gracie and Belle was a fun story to write because they were coming, Belle would come and visit. And so I did the writing, Alexandra did the actual drawing and then Steve, my husband, my was the one that question. colored. Oh, all right, so um, lastly, do you have any final word for our today guest, Nella? So, you know, when I said my daughter's name, the, the thing answered, so that's what you heard behind. Oh, okay. <laughs> I to say the name again or she will start talking. All right. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't hear the question very well. I said, do you have any last word? We have like, you know, one minute. Oh, sure. Um, and last word is that uh, we cannot underestimate the power of the arts uh, for ourselves, for, for the world, for the universe. So it brings us together. It's necessary. I told the artist, I will say, believe in yourself, have faith, and uh, just always, always have faith. There will always be a tomorrow, and there is nothing that can go wrong. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Nello. This concludes our today's conversation with Nello. And if you have any question and you want to reach out to her, you can check her website. I'm sure there is a contact page and you can contact Nello. If you have any question, uh, you can also email us at the email office at nawa.org. Um, and don't forget our conversation with Karin on um, subject line. And don't forget, um, next week, next Friday, we don't have a show because of 4th of July. And I'll see you um, all July 10 for another um, conversation with another talented artist. Thank you very much, Nella, and thank you everyone for this wonderful okay. opportunity and conversation. Thank you.
Bye.